welcome to another episode of The Final Siren with Duck and Oz. Another winning episode. Another winning episode, Oz. Uh, the Freo Dockers 9-15 uh, defeated the Adelaide Crows 4-10 in front of 51,037 people here on, I'm not calling it a Good Friday game, I'm calling it a Great Friday, mate. Oh, look, absolutely sensational, Duck. And sometimes you like to win pretty and other times it's downright ugly and at the end of the day it doesn't matter how you win as long as you win and I put it to you that in such a game last year tight contest it's ugly do we come out with the win 50 50 I think this year the boys have shown they're cracking in and irrespective of the game style we're just managing to eke out the wins and I think that is huge for this football club going forward may or may not have said on the old chat group mate if we win this game we're making finals, mate. Book the bus, you're calling. Oh, book you're the calling bus, to book the bus Ooh, early, Oz. Oh, mate, fantastic. But look, realistically, 3 0, it's going to take it's going to take a little bit of a, a, of a downturn for us not to make the finals now. We're both really up and about. I think these early games are really crucial for setting up your run into the finals. But like you said, Oz, very, very. Um, very much an arm wrestle, but I felt like we we essentially dominated from halfway through that second quarter. But it just we just couldn't get that pressure on the scoreboard. A lot of opportunities missed. A lot of opportunities gone away, going inside fifty. A lot of hand passes when we're inside fifty, which you know gets my goat. And I'm just like, I sound like a nuffy, but I'm like, just kick it. But that's always my thing. When you're inside fifty, you have a ping. Had to get it to Sunny a couple of times. In the hey, geez, he had an almost Didn't. game, mate. Sonny have a game. Like despite the despite the inaccuracy today, his role within that forward line and the link up passages were just sublime. Unfortunately couldn't finish off his hard work. But there are a number of things that I think you're going to go through in a sec. There are just a number of no, players. You go, that, you go. So I want to start with this guy. I want to start with Banfield, who often when we talk about Banfield, it's like, does he kick goals? Yeah. You know, what, what is he accumulating in terms of possession? But today was a classic Bailey Banfield game where he was just involved and getting involved and causing either turnovers or goal assists. And I just thought that that was atypical of what we needed. And you might refer now to the perhaps the well I, was, I, the I think you should you should talk on it mate the crypto.com defining moment tell us about it. look the crypto defining moment for me was all about who could take ascendancy in that fourth quarter who can actually take advantage of a moment which would break open the game and for me it was banner's goal and it's not just because he kicked the goal it was the three efforts to get to that point yeah it was the way in which we we were just dog hungry at the contest we wheeled the ball forward banner's got it and he slotted that goal, and, and from there, I'm going to be honest, from there I thought, oh, yeah, we've got this in the bag. Yeah. And it's just, and it's almost like the damn wall, bang, crack, boom, open, and yeah. then we were just able to get that three-goal buffer, and that's really all it took. Mm. And because it, it, you know, it was swinging, it was ebbing and flowing, um, but the crypto.com defining moment, Bailey Banfield's goal in that fourth quarter which really gave the Fremantle Dockers the ascendancy, which was sensational. Fantastic goal by by Bailey Banfield. One, two, three efforts. He plays that graveyard shift across the half forward. It's the hardest role to play in the AFL. He's a real whipping boy, I think. And, you know, like, it's really hard that the, the efforts that he puts in and then he gets that reward for effort with that goal. And, you know, Banners has had a really great start to the season. Looked like he was on the outer early on. You know, didn't play in the um, too much in the preseason games and then went from there. All, okay. right. All right. We've got our guests, Jordan, Jordan Clark, Lukey Ryan. Hello, Luke. Luke, Ryan. How, How are you going, guys? Good to see you, mate. All righty. Sunny. <laughs> You guys got us. Sonny got on the big uh, Foxtel on the TV. Forwards, mids. Yeah, we, that's what happens. We'd rather be on this anyways. Yeah. Let's start. But why don't we start off with Sonny? What a game by him. Like, he nearly had one of the one of his great turn-back-the-clock games. Two goals, four, but... How did, did you talk to him after that game? Do you get... Do you have a little bit of a chat? Say, mate, you kick six there and, you know, you're looking at three Brownlow votes? I think the feedback we got from him, just look for us half-backs, we'll put them through. <laughs> 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 nah, he's done well. It's all coming off his pressure and... Um, he's been a leader that um, this year, and um, I'm sure he won't kick two goals for again. He'll kick four goals too, so we're looking forward to that. Look, Lukey, mate, 27 disposals, 10 marks, 742 metres gain. Sensational. Just 
again with with PSC in that back line, like the the big guys just taking those hangers and really making sure we kept their forwards to nothing. And then the run off the back line, mate, it was just sublime. Like talk us through that and the control and how you guys see that game. Um, yeah, well, we've been a tight back line now for a few years. We've been really building. Last year wasn't it our best year, but thought this year we're off to a good start. Um, the boys are putting on really good heat, which is helping us a fair bit. And I think Moose has been our best player for the last three weeks. He's been unbelievable. He's leading from the front. His voice, his connection has been outstanding. And then we're trying to win all half of our contests. And then blokes like Clarky and Brandon Walker and um, Dozer Aishi running off halfbacks, making our job a lot easier. Yeah, and Joshy Draper, second game. I mean, we'll talk about the hair later, but how, how composed is that young yeah. man out there? Oh, oh the kid can play. Uh, he's, you know, he's one for the fans to be really excited for. I mean, he's um, really athletic. He's got all the attributes anyone would want. Um, and then, yeah, his game sense is going to slowly develop the more he plays at the level. I mean, what is that, his third, second game now? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think this kid's got a ceiling and it's pretty high. I, I think from, from what we can see, mate, and, and you can talk to this, it just looks like you guys are breaking those lines and taking it on, taking the kick on or just busting through with pace. Do you guys, like, do you really look forward to doing that? Is that your thing? That's what you want to be doing? Yeah, well, we talked to Boydy and, um, like Luke, you touched on it, obviously the contest is key uh, and the big fella's been getting it done for us week in, week out at the moment. Moose is really leading the way and, um, it's a fun part of footy. Uh, I mean, you got to defend, defend hard, um, win your contests, and it's sort of a reward in a way to be able to attack, run off, create, and enjoy that sort of side yeah. of the game. And obviously, talk us through, like uh, Omac and Big Coxie go down in that first game. So there's two key defenders, pretty much, that have gone down. How does the the backline group regroup in a sense with that? Um, well, we've trained it all pre-season. We've always we haven't played our best 22 in intra clubs. We've always been um, like a leader with a younger one, and Hugh Davies and Drapes, um, they've, from last year, they've come on leaps and bounds. They're looking unbelievable. We always have that next man in mentality. All you gotta do is play your role no matter who it is, and Drapes is doing an outstanding job, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for him because he's really playing well, and yeah, his composure for a young kid, he's, he's really quiet, but um, yeah, he's, he's gonna be a super player for us for a long time. Nice, look, I'm a big advocate for the backs need to get more love. Obviously, the outrageous hair, I love it. <laughs> Drapes is coming out with the cornrows. Do we foresee perhaps an entire back line with cornrows? Or are we dying hair? I mean, because I think you've started it, but I think it needs to be a full, you know, let's buy in with everyone. What, what are we thinking? Yeah, I reckon Clarkie can go back to the mullet. <laughs> I, I, love, I love that. It was, uh, didn't mind that at all. I think Moose, Moose is probably the only one that needs to do something with it, I reckon. Jim. I'm not a fan of his hair. <laughs> we love Jimmer, but I think if he went the cornrows, he'd probably kiss him and say goodbye. So. <laughs> and, uh, Clarky, just talk us through the headband, the Crimean war look this uh, week. Do you want to channel Caleb's wrong? No, nah, I um, <laughs> got it, stitches in last week and um, thought, you know, don't want to cop him. I'm going to get him out after the game, so I thought, don't want to split him open again. I want to go away and enjoy my Easter break. And, uh, you know, didn't want to have a closed-up eye for the Easter egg hunt over the weekend. So. <laughs> Uh, so through, look, 3-0, and o, like great place to be. How do we solidify going forward? How do we take the momentum that we have and push forward? Um, yeah, we have, we have two days off now. Really go enjoy that. Friends and family. Regroup coming Monday and just, yeah, review this game. Review our footy. Um, just what we can do better and what we've been doing really well. And um, we've got Carl next week, so it's going to be a great... Um, Great stepping stone. Uh, they're probably one of the best teams in the comp at the moment, so we're looking forward to that. And being in Adelaide for 10 days, we can bond um, with each other, so it's going to be good fun. Yeah, and just obviously, yeah, in Adelaide for 10 days, you've got Kerno and Mackay that you, you go up against, probably the two best forwards in the competition nearly. How do you guys plan for that? Do you Who, who plays on? Is it going to be you, Lukey, do you think? Are you going to get a big guy? Or uh, is it hope, going to be Drake? I hope not, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a 6v6 mentality no matter who it is, but I'm sure Moose and Drapes will take the two big boys and we'll just look to support, as we always do, and hopefully there's pressure on the ball and make our job a lot easier, which the boys have been doing for the last three weeks. Look, I'm seeing this, guys, honestly, as what looks to be a forward line in form versus, I think, the best back line in form. Um, obviously, Duck talked about you know what we can do, but surely there's confidence that you guys can towel them. Uh, well. <laughs> Yeah, let's just say I don't answer that, but uh, we certainly don't walk in walk into games week week on week and saying we're going to tell these yeah. blokes up. Obviously, um, you know everyone at the level is a very good player, and you got to respect um, everyone's strengths. So 
Um, the, the moment you don't respect a team's strengths, um, it, it tends to expose you pretty badly. Yeah, leave that to us. We'll do that. We'll, we'll do <laughs> now, the talking. You just, Hayden yeah. Young playing in the midfield, is there, when you see him, are you snobbing him as he's walking through the corridor or are you still dapping him up? What's going on? Because it seems like there's a little bit of betrayal, him moving out of the back line group into the mids. I'm actually loving it. He's playing a defensive mid role, like sort of a sweeper and always at the one we always connect with. So... I think he's doing an outstanding job. Um, we'd love to have more of him, but um, it's good seeing him up there getting the ball going our way. So he's doing a really good job. Nice. And I, th- I guess one last one from me, guys. Where can this football club go? Based on our start, where can we go? Give, give us something here to – something palpable. What, what can we get? Yeah, obviously um, uh, we had a conversation. There's a big group at the start of the year that we didn't want to, you know, put a roof on what we could achieve. Um, so uh, I think it's up to us now to – Complete, completely keep playing our roles and win games of footy um, and, and the rest should look after itself that's how it sort of works in this business so um, it's very cliche I don't have a lot for you but yeah we just focus on Carlton next week and then the, the hurdle after that yeah. now just having a look at the, the back seven pretty much you got obviously Drapes has got the cornrows AP's got his big long locks you guys have got different looks with the Crimean War and the bleach blonde what's Husey got to do because Husey's just he's such a like he's just a regular clean cut guy has he got to do something a bit freaky to stand out? Maybe uh, mohawk? He, or? He, he gets a skin fade every probably three weeks and he comes in looking very fresh. He's a good looking rooster, Hughes. He doesn't need too much. He's got the pipes, he's got the tan, so <laughs> he's doing a lot right. Tan right. cut suits his game, really. It's, just, yeah. it's business. Strictly it's business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just Strictly. need to get Andy Brayshaw or probably a new haircut, I reckon. Yeah, it's yeah. very uh, private school set up, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the final siren. Appreciate it. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Oh, hello. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Go to the backs. Cheers, guys. Thank you to the backs. (laughs) Cheers, mate. Well, I hope that the the back six get votes all together because that collectively were fantastic. Outstanding. um, This this week. I mean, Draper, we spoke about it before. Second game. Look. He looks like a champion he does. already. You know, he's a guy who got injured in his draft year, maybe would have gone a lot higher than what he ended up, but it, he just looks like he belongs at AFL level. Yep. Very level-headed, um, very athletic, uh, good user of the ball, very smart with it, fantastic. I thought Alex Pierce, obviously, I think, like Luke said just then, he's been our best player. Yeah, for, he's been for the first outstanding. Abso- like, gave Tex Walker an absolute bath. Yeah. Bath time for Texy. Uh you know, Ryan and Clark, those two boys there, their run off the back line, fantastic. And then, you know, your unsung heroes like your Aish and your Husey and your Walker all played really great games. And, you know, realistically, we've kept we've kept the Brisbane Lions, who've got a really powerful forward line to, to 10 goals 10. We've kept North Melbourne to 11 goals 10. And then we've kept Adelaide to 4 goals 10. So, you know, the back six continue to grow and develop. And it is a very young back six still back there. You know, Walker hasn't played that many games. Draper hasn't played that many games. Clark is, you know, we think about him as like he's a stalwart, but it, it is only like about his fourth or fifth mm. season. So you've got those young guys. And to come back from that adversity of losing the two key defenders in OMAC and Coxie, and for them to come back and have two absolutely outstanding games in a row, I think has been fantastic. Yeah, look, totally agree. Um, I really wanted to point that, out, point that out before about the backs. I think... The most important thing to, I think, to understand is how great our backline has been and how much in form they have been. And they've kept us in games where early we've either let the opposition get a run on or, you know, we haven't had the ascendancy and they've kept us in the game. If in a true MVP setup, Alex Pierce would be leading the MVP setup, in, you know, across the AFL, but we, we do know how that works. If I could just quickly go sideways a little bit and talk about, I thought, one of the unsung heroes of today, which was Jeremy Sharp. Yeah. I thought his two-way running was elite today. I thought across the wing, he was just running all day and just providing the out, providing the link. And that's, I, I guess, with what we were doing, this whole di- idea of absorbing, absorbing, and then going, and then bouncing back. And he was just able to give us that outlet. And I think across the board, I really love what he did. And we've got that winger. We've got that winger that, you know, that can really take the game on, penetrating kick, um, and really looks the goods in his third game for the Fremantle Football Club. And he hasn't played too many games overall, yeah. so he's still developing as a young fella. But, yeah, look, it's, it's interesting because the first two games, I was still a little bit, you know, not, not 100% bought in on Jeremy Sharp. 
that game sold me on the young man. Yeah. I thought he was outstanding. His his effort back and forth. He's got an absolute motor on him, mate. Oh, and yeah. He has got a yeah. tank as well. He can run quickly and he can run for days. Yeah. So really, yeah. really fantastic effort from Jeremy Sharp. I thought uh, today. I I thought as well. Like even chucking in our, our other midfielders that that just got a, a fair bit of it. We spoke about Youngy. He's from essentially the the. It was about halfway through that second quarter again onwards. He just went, no, no, I'm taking this game by the scruff. And Adelaide do have a really potent midfield, and their potencies are their strength is around their clearances. But you know, old mate uh, Youngy just goes, no, nah, I'll have eight clearances. Six hundred and seventy-two meters gained. Yeah, using it by foot and. Everyone looking for him. And even his kicks that go like 20 metres, they kind of, he kicks it to advantage, so a player marks it and goes. Mm. And that really gets it going for our forward line. It's it's unlucky we weren't able to capitalise as much this week in inside our forward 50s, but I think it doesn't matter as long as you're coming away with the wind. And, and Adelaide, you know, they were a team on the rise. They're 0-3, but look, they were a team on the rise. They're a team that... Essentially, this is kind of like an eight-point game because yep. they're that team that we're thinking is going to be there and thereabouts around that same area as us, and we've managed to get a really good win. Yeah, now, I think yeah. And just one of the things I really want to emphasise is this idea of taking moments. And Fremantle have really taken moments. And I understand that last week we gave the opposition a run on it. I understand the week before, you know, we gave away a few cat 10s early on. But when it counted, we've taken our moments. And you can't, all, and like I've said, we, we can't always win pretty, yeah. but we've got to bank the points. And we've, we've banked those points early on. Um, I think the way that the boys have fought on in all three games has been outstanding. And it's not, you, the, the beauty about it is you can't just point specifically to one person and say, well, that was it in terms of the entire contest. Like everyone is contributing and I think that's outstanding and is only going to help us going forward. And I think it really it shows that the boys mental strength and mental ability has risen over the last three years. I think last year we obviously regressed a fair bit and it was to do with when we had an opportunity to win the games and we were favourites we kind of we didn't deal with that well mentally. But now we're like, yep, we're the favourites. We're going to dominate these games. Yep. We're going to go out and we're dominate. And look, to be honest, although the scoreboard didn't reflect it, I felt we dominated this game yeah, for large absolutely. periods. Absolutely. And if we keep playing this football and we're able to just be a little bit cleaner inside 50, we're going to beat most teams. A big challenge comes in the next two weeks where we play Carlton in Adelaide and then we play Port Adelaide Ooh, in Adelaide. So tasty. two really big challenges, but... I think at the start of the year when you're looking at that, you go, oh, that might be... T-. I think we're, re- we're a red-hot chance for both those. Yeah, absolutely. We're probably a 50-50 leaning towards a win for both of us. There you go. There's a little one for you. But, guys, um, look, I, I think how good's that? Celebrate your Easter. Be safe on the roads if you're travelling down south like I am next, uh, this, next, next, tomorrow, morning. tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, travelling down south. But uh, have a really great Easter. Really enjoy yourselves. You know, the one thing I'd say is I think it's it's such a great sign by the Freo Dockers fans that 51,000 people showed oh, up yeah. here. Biggest crowd that for a non-derby game. I think that this is something that the Dockers, as a club, needs to go to the AFL and say, hey, this is our game. North Melbourne can play in, in, uh, in Melbourne, but the away game is the Dockers. Friday afternoon into the evening, nothing better. Really fantastic day and... You know, as I think it's it, it's it shows by the 51,000 people who came out today and supported the Dockers. And that's the benchmark, people. So 51,000 every week. You reckon keep going? I'll keep it? going with keep it. Keep it going. So, I mean, this is the thing that's kind of, I guess, is now the momentum killer for all the home games. Is we've got two, a neutral game and an away game. But come back in three weeks' time and, and let's see what we can do. Let's, get around uh, the boys. Let's uh, Yeah, get around the boys big time. All right, guys, All right, thanks for watching uh, The Final Siren or listening to it. Remember to subscribe, rate, and review. Remember to listen to our show, The Purple Rain. We're at Purple Rain 95, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and at The Purple Rain 95 on TikTok and YouTube. Uh, remember to hit the bell so you get all your Dockers news as well and all your Dockers videos, um, and make sure that you subscribe to this wherever you're listening to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.